By the end of this video, you will know everything to master side spin aiming, how to adjust your aim, the two different techniques to apply side spin, how the cue ball's path changes with different spin, how to avoid common mistakes when using side spin, and even how to use side spin to make aiming easier. So let's start with understanding the physics by playing this shot with every spin and speed there is. Let's play the shot first with actually no spin on the cue ball, and we're trying to make the nine ball into this pocket here as you can see this is our ghost ball on the table this means the ghost ball here and the nine ball are in a straight line to the heart of the pocket and if i'm just shooting to the center of the ghost ball i will be able to make that nine ball you can also see this tiny figure here on the table or on the rail i've actually put that onto that rail to see when i'm down on the shot where exactly i need to aim so no spin and a soft hit and what happened here? We missed this shot. Did we do something wrong? Did we aim wrong? No. The problem that we're facing here is when we're hitting soft, we have something called cut induced throw. You have to imagine that the cue ball is actually coming from that direction. So when the cue ball makes contact with the nine ball, it also pushes the nine ball a tiny, tiny bit into that direction. And because of that, we're actually missing this ball fat. Let's do the same thing and play this shot a lot harder this time and aim to the exact same point to the center of the ghost ball and let's see what happens here. So again, center of the ghost ball but this time we're hitting a lot harder. And you can see this time we made the ball. Well, the difference is when you're aiming or playing shots and you're hitting hard, there isn't a lot of cut and use throw. If you're hitting a bit softer or the softer you hit, the more throw you have. And this is why when you're playing this shot with no spin and you want to aim to the ghost ball point, then you have to hit a lot harder. And if you hit soft with no spin on the cue ball, well, you will actually miss thick. But the problem is if you're hitting really hard, we lose a lot of accuracy. So what could we do instead? Well, if you watched some pro players play and if you're watching my videos, you probably noticed that on this type of shot, I always like to use a tiny bit of outside spin and the exact reason for that is that I don't have to hit hard, I still have that cut induced throw, but with that outside spin I also have a bit of spin induced throw and the right spin throws the 9 ball to the left. So the 9 ball would go here with no spin, we use some right spin and the right spin throws the 9 ball a tiny bit to the left. And this is why I'm using that outside spin, because I can still aim to my ghost ball point. I don't have to worry about cut induced throw or spin induced throw, because those two things are actually canceling each other out if I'm using a tiny bit of outside spin here. So let's show you how this would look. I'm still aiming to the ghost ball point, but this time just a tip of outside spin. And that way we are able to make that nine ball. All right, quick summary. Remember the cue ball is coming from this direction. So if you're using no spin and you're hitting soft, the cue ball will actually catch the nine ball, throw it a bit into this direction and we will miss thick. What you can do is if you still wanna play it with no spin and hit it soft, just aim a bit thinner on the nine ball. So actually aim it with the ghost ball aiming to the long rail because then the cue ball again will catch the nine ball and will actually throw it in the pocket. What you can also do is just use your regular ghost ball aiming point and just hit a lot harder because that way the cut and use throw won't be that present or just be a tiny tiny bit and you will still be able to make the nine ball. Or what you could also do is if you don't want to hit it really hard just use a touch of outside spin that actually throws the nine ball to the left and we also have the cut and use throw that pushes the nine ball to the right both of those factors that are canceling each other out, you can still use the ghost ball aiming point and aim to the center of the pocket. If you're having a straight shot, there won't be any cut and use throw, so no need for outside spin. If you just have a tiny bit of an angle, there will also be just a tiny bit of cut and use throw. This means you will also just need to use a tiny bit of outside spin. It peaks around 30 degrees. This is where you have to use the most amount of outside spin. If you're a lot thinner, once again, then you have to use actually less outside spin. Okay, but this is a bit too deep into the topic. Let's play this shot once again. We're going to aim still to the center of the ghost ball. We're going to use the same amount of spin on the cue ball. The only difference here will be that we're hitting really, really hard. What do you think will happen? Will we make the nine ball still into the pocket? Will we catch it a bit too thick? This means the nine ball goes to the short rail. 
oil actually hit it a bit too thin, this means the 9 goes to the long rail. Think about it, what do you think will happen? You can also pause the video and I'm going to execute it and we're going to talk about it afterwards. So, same amount of spin, same aiming point, but really, really hard. You can see what happened here is we actually hit the nine ball into the short rail. And the reason for that is something called deflection. We didn't talk about deflection yet in this video, but what deflection basically means is, let me demonstrate real quick. When we're down in the shot and we're aiming to our ghost ball point, you can see the yellow figure on the rail we will actually hit there. But if we're adding right spin to the cue ball just as we did and we're hitting hard, the cue ball will actually deflect to the left. So have a look where the cue ball hits that rail. You can see the cue ball actually hit the rail on the left of the figure. And this is exactly what happened here in our example. We were aiming to our ghost ball, but the cue ball actually deflected to the left because we were hitting it on the right. And you can see that way the cue ball goes to the left. So what happened was we were aiming to that ghost ball point, but the cue ball actually deflected to the left and we caught it too thick. And this is something really interesting. If you're hitting really hard, the deflection will always be the dominant force because as you can remember in our first example, when we were hitting with no spin really hard, there was actually no cut induced throw. And this happens when you're hitting really hard, there is no cut induced throw or just a little little bit and no spin induced throw. So whenever you're hitting really really hard, you actually just have or mainly have to adjust for the deflection. So if I would play this shot with outside spin and I would hit really, really hard, I would actually not aim to the ghost ball point, but a bit to the right so that they actually cut the nine ball too thin because then the deflection pushes the cue ball back on the line to the left. So let me show you how this would look. So it looks like I'm actually missing that nine ball, but the deflection will push the cue ball to the left. And you can see how far we were actually off with our aiming. And this is really, really interesting. This is why it's so difficult to actually aim shots with spin if you're hitting really, really hard. All right, let's summarize it again. If you're shooting soft and you're just using the right amount of outside spin, the cut induced throw and the spin induced throw will actually cancel each other out and you can just aim to the center of the ghost ball. If you're having a bit too much spin on the cue ball, this means the spin induced throw will be more dominant than the cut induced throw. The nine ball will be actually thrown to the left, remember because you're using right spin. So in that case, you actually have to aim not to the ghost ball, but a bit thicker to the short rail because then the nine ball is be thrown to the left and goes to the center of the pocket. What happens, remember, if you're using outside spin and you're hitting really hard, remember the flaction will be the dominant force. So. Let's actually pretend we're shooting from here and we're hitting really, really hard. This means the cue ball will actually deflect to the left. Even though you're aiming perfectly to the center of the ghost ball, the cue ball will actually arrive like this. So in this case, you actually won't make the nine ball. So in our example, if the cue ball is coming from that direction and you're hitting really hard and you're aiming to the center of the ghost ball, the cue ball won't actually arrive here but a bit more here and this means you will actually shoot the nine ball into the short realm. So with outside spin and a really hard hit on this particular shot, you actually have to aim a bit thinner. So not to the center of the ghost ball, but a bit more to this direction. Then the cue ball will deflect to the left and actually arrive at the right spot. So don't get this wrong. You will still hit the nine ball with outside spin with a hard hit. In this case, in the ghost ball point, but you are not aiming to the ghost ball because the cue ball won't arrive at your aiming point. Okay, I hope you got this. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Now we're doing the same things, but this time we're going to use inside spin on the cue ball. This is in this case, left spin. Remember what happened when we were using no spin on the cue ball? The cue ball came from that direction to the center of the ghost ball and the cue ball actually pushed the nine ball into this direction. This is why we actually caught that short rail. But what happens with the spin induced throw when we're using left spin? The right spin actually threw the nine ball to the left. This means more into this direction. The left spin actually throws the nine ball to the right. So it also throws it to the short rail. This means we now have the cut and spin induced throw and both those um, forces throw the nine ball 
to the short well, so if we are just aiming to our center ghost ball point, we will actually miss way thick on this ball. Let me demonstrate real quick how this would look. Can you believe how thick we actually missed that ball? But this is the huge problem with inside spin because you have the cut and use throw, you have the spin and use throw, and they aren't canceling each other out like with the outside spin, but they're supporting each other. This is why we're missing so thick. But the interesting thing is, if we're playing the same shot, same spin, but we're hitting a bit harder, the nine ball will actually go a bit closer to the pocket. If we're still hitting harder, the nine ball will get closer and closer and closer to the pocket until you're able to make it. If you're then hitting even harder, the nine ball will actually go to the short realm. And this is just because of the flag chain spin induced throw and cut induced throw. Remember, the harder you hit, the more the cue ball will deflect and the less the force of the cut or spin induced throw will be. So the interesting thing here is that there will actually be a sweet spot where you can still aim to the center of the ghost ball when using inside spin, when using outside spin, when using any spin on the cue ball. You just have to know the right speed for the sweet spot. So in this particular shot, it would be a bit more than medium speed. Well, everyone has its own medium speed, but let's just try to make it by aiming to the center of the ghost ball. And I'm just going to adjust my speed here. So again, center of the ghost ball, left spin. And you can see with this um, amount of speed, we were actually able to make the nine ball into the heart of the pocket. If I'm playing the same shot now, Let's do that real quick with the same spin, aiming still to the center of the ghost ball, but I'm hitting really, really hard this time. Then we're actually going to miss Finn because, as you know, the flag chain will be dominant, pushes the cue ball to the right. Not a lot of spin or cut and use throw. So the trick with um, aiming with side spin is that you have to use the right speed if you want to aim to the center of the ghost ball and if you want to use a different speed then you have to adjust your aim all right let's summarize the inside spin remember we're hitting soft we're coming from this direction so even if you're hitting perfectly at the center of the ghost ball the cut and use throw will throw the nine ball to the right and the spin and use throw the left spin will also throw the nine ball to the right so those two factors are actually supporting each other and that's why it's so so difficult to play this shot with inside spin Remember, with the outside spin, we have the cut induced throw, we have the spin induced throw, and both cancel each other out. This is not the case here. So, in case you want to shoot this ball soft with inside spin, you actually have to aim thinner on the nine ball, because then the nine ball is still thrown to the right, but it is thrown into the heart of the pocket. What happens if you're hitting uh, really hard with inside spin? Remember, the flag chain will be dominant, so the uh, cue ball will actually be pushed to this direction. So you will actually, if you're aiming to the center of the ghost ball, you will actually miss spin because there won't be a lot of cut and use throw and spin and use throw, just the flag chain. So if you're hitting this ball hard with inside spin, you actually have to aim thicker, just like that. So this is your ghost ball that you have to aim. You're actually trying to shoot it in the short rail, but the cue ball won't arrive at your ghost ball aiming point. It will actually be pushed to the right and then just has the right um, contact point on the nine ball. And remember, there will be a sweet spot in between with the right amount of speed. We can still aim to the center of the ghost ball. And I'm really sorry, there's one more thing we have to talk about, which is called swerve. So whenever you're playing shots with side spin, inside spin or outside spin, you have to be as level as possible because what happens if you have an elevated cue, the cue ball will actually make a curve. So I'm going to use left spin here and I'm hitting hard and usually as you can see the deflection pushes the cue ball to the right and we will hit on the right side of our figure. But if you're playing the same shot, same amount of spin, same speed, but this time we're elevating our cue for whatever reason. Maybe there's a ball in the way and we have to elevate a tiny bit to play this type of shot. See what happens. Where will the cue ball hit? Remember, left spin hitting hard. And you can see how the cue ball made a curve and this is the problem. So here I'm going to play with right spin and I'm playing soft and as you can see, I have to elevate a lot. So what happens is the cue ball will actually make a curve to the right. And if you're aiming to the center of the ghost ball, we're probably going to miss the 11 ball completely. 
So what you actually have to do is you have to aim to miss the 11 ball to the left. You're aiming to that point. And then the cue ball makes a curve and should probably hit the 11 ball here. And as you can see, we're not going to um, hit the 11 ball at the ghost ball aiming point because remember, we're having right spin on the cue ball. We're hitting soft. So the cue ball will actually throw the 11 ball to the left. So my chances are probably, I think around 5% to actually make that ball. But I'm just going to show it to you nevertheless. So you can see this is why aiming systems, if you're having to play, if you have to play those kind of shots, are really useless to be honest. And this is just a hundred percent feel. So I think I'm trying to shoot towards here. Of course, it depends a bit on the speed with the right spin. And we actually made that ball first try, by the way. So whenever you're playing shots with side spin, try to be as level as possible. Otherwise, you will have to calculate for the curve and this will become really, really messy and really difficult to calculate. So to make this easier, let's show you the two ways to apply side spin. When you're applying side spin, should you use backhand English or fronthand English? When you're aiming along the straight line on a table and you're using right spin, the cue ball will deflect off the aiming line to the left. When you're hitting harder, the cue ball will deflect even more to the left. So when facing the straight in shot and you're aiming the ball to the center of the pocket with right spin, you will miss the shot to the right. And this is because the cue ball deflects off the straight line to the left. In that case, you could use backhand English to adjust for the deflection. Just aim the ball to the center of the pocket with no spin, then move your back arm to the outside so that you're applying right spin. Now you have automatically adjusted for the deflection because your aiming line now points to the right, but the deflection pushes the cue ball back to the left. Very important here, the bridge length plays a huge role. If I'm too close to the cue ball and I'm applying back in English, I will be way too much of the initial aiming line. So the pivot is greater than the deflection. If I'm too far away, however, the pivot will be smaller than the deflection. Keep in mind that a low deflection shaft like mine needs less pivot because there is less deflection to compensate for. This means my bridge length has to be a bit longer. And vice versa, when using a high deflection shaft, your bridge length might need to be a bit shorter. Now let's play the same shot with the same spin, just soft this time and let's apply back in English once again. Now we're actually missing the shot to the left and this is because speed plays a huge role. With soft speed there will be less deflection because the cue ball will actually curve a tiny bit back to the right depending on your cue elevation and there is also something called spin induced throw. So that just means with backhand English the pivot to the right will just be too much this time. So instead of moving our back arm, we're just moving our bridge hand to the right, so we're using front hand English. This means on slow roll shots, just move your bridge hand because otherwise the pivot will be too much. But the big question now is what should you do on long range shots? Well, let's play this one hard with my house cue and let's use backhand English. So here, I know I have a lot of deflection, so I need a lot of pivot here. So I'm actually going to shorten my bridge length. I'm probably going to use that one, aiming straight. Now I'm adjusting with the backhand English. And this actually worked like charm. So let's do the same shot or play the same shot. Use my regular, regular cue. And here, you should know how I have to adjust. I have to actually widen my bridge length because I have less deflection, that way I need less pivot. So I think let's use this bridge length this time, aiming straight, going over, and perfectly to the heart of the pocket. This is actually very well that this worked that way, so you can see with a lot of practice or a bit of practice and experience this actually works really well. The big question however is what happens now if you're going to slow roll this shot or hitting a lot softer. So here you should already know that this time we have last deflection, we may, might have a bit of a curve to the right, so I won't actually use this short 
bridge length, I'm actually going to widen to have less pivot. So let's have this wider bridge length. Use backhand English. And now you see what happens. We're going to miss the shot to the left. So the problem here is when you're facing long distance shots and you're slow rolling it, you have the same problem as with short distance shots. You don't want to use backhand English. So instead, you want to use front-hand English because you have less pivot that way. So let's use this bridge length again. Now I'm just going to move my bridge hand to the right and see what happens this time. And we actually made it ball. So the general rule is on long distance shot where you're hitting softer, you want to use front-hand English. And on short distance shots where you're hitting harder, you want to use backhand English. And the beauty about this whole backhand front-hand English thing is that it works for any amount of spin you're putting onto the cue ball. So let's play this one with backhand English and just a tiny amount of right spin. So I'm going down, aiming straight to the ghost ball, just pivoting a bit over to add a tiny amount of right spin. And we have the ball into the heart of the pocket. And now I'm going to play the exact same shot. This means I'm going to play at the same speed I'm going to use the same bridge length. I'm just going to use more right spin on the cue ball. And why does this work? Well, imagine you're adding more right spin to the cue ball. You will pivot more to the right, but at the same time, you will have more deflection. Both of those things cancel each other out and you will still make that 13 ball into the heart of the pocket. Let's go down, same bridge length, same speed, aim into the ghost ball point. Now I'm adding way more spin and still to the heart of the pocket, and you can see the difference in the cue ball. The only thing you have to be a bit careful of is when you're playing those shots with um, side spin, that you wanna be as level as possible with the cue ball. Because the problem is when you're playing spin and you're elevating your cue, the cue ball will also make a curve. So always make sure to be as level as possible. Let's play the shot one more time. So I'm going down using backhand English, but this time I'm elevating a bit more, as you can see. And that way I will miss the shot to the left because the cue ball will actually make a curve. But how do you practice all of those shots? It's very easy. Just set the same shot over and over up again. Just experiment with the backhand English with the combination of both. Maybe if you're in between, you wanna use a bit of backhand English, a bit of frontend English like that depends a lot on the speed that you're playing the shot with and that way you will actually learn and this by the way doesn't only work on straight in shots of course this works with angled shots you just want to aim to every time to the ghost ball point how am i doing all of this well to be honest i had no idea what backhand english or frontend english was even when i started uploading videos on this channel uh, because the way I learned to aim with side spin is I knew about all the physics and on every single shot that I played, I had a certain expectation. I played the shot, I analyzed what happens or what happened and uh, compared my expectation with the outcome and that way I've learned to play with side spin. And nowadays, when I'm aiming with side spin, I don't go down, use backhand or front in English. I already go down with the spin that I want to add and already with the aiming adjustments because I already know at what speed I'm going to hit and I know all the physics that you should probably or definitely also know. Yes, but only if you haven't skipped the first part of this video. And then I just go down with the spin, with the adjustments and hopefully make the six now. Yeah, I made it luckily. So now let's also bring the cue ball's path into the equation. We will play every shot with the same amount of speed and from the same cue ball's position. Let's start with a center ball first. This is the ghost ball view and as you can see we have to adjust a tiny bit for a cut induced throw. This is because we're hitting pretty firm and that way cut induced throw isn't that big. As you can see the cue ball follows the tangent line just a tiny bit in the beginning. This is because the cue ball has a tiny bit of forwards rotation on it. If we would hit a bit below center then we have a perfectly sliding cue ball and the cue ball would go straight along the tangent line.
Now we have a reference for a center ball hit, so let's now play maximum low on the cue ball. This time you also have to adjust for a cut induced throw, but only half the amount because if you're playing maximum high or low, the cut induced throw cuts in a half approximately. How much will the cue ball deviate from our reference line? Pause the video, think about it and then continue watching. And now the cue ball travels towards the side pocket. And by the way, if you're changing your speed with the same amount of low, this line of course also changes, but this is a future topic. Now what do you think? Where can we get the cue ball if we're playing low and right spin? I will tell you in a minute, but first of all, let's talk about the ghost ball aiming point. Well, we're adding spin this time. This makes things a bit more difficult. Very important, there is spin induced throw and deflection that we have to adjust for. But keep in mind, we're hitting pretty firm. This means spin induced throw has less impact, but deflection has more impact. So right spin will push the cue ball to the left. This means without adjusting, we would hit too thick. This means again, we have to adjust and aim a bit thinner. And of course, with low right, you get the cue ball even closer to the long rail. So we have a range from low right to center ball. That is this area. So if you're hitting anywhere in between, you can send the cue ball somewhere along a line in this area. But what happens now if you're playing the cue ball with just right spin? Pause the video, think about it yourself. And of course, this time we're adding even more spin on the cue ball, so deflection will be larger. This means we have to adjust more and aim even thinner this time. Do you see the strange curve that the cue ball is making? This is caused by the right spin that wants to bring the cue ball to the left, but the tiny bit of forwards rotation wants to bring the cue ball to the right. Now let's get real crazy. What happens if we're adding maximum low on the cue ball that wants to bring the cue ball more to the left again, but we're also adding left spin that brings the cue ball to the right. Think about it yourself. And of course, regarding our ghost ball, it's almost the same as with low right, just the opposite direction. We have to aim a bit thicker this time because the left spin pushes the cue ball to the right, but don't forget about the cut induced throw, so it's not that much as with low right that we have to adjust. Interestingly, the left spin is much stronger than the draw and we're leaving our initial area where we could bring the cue ball and hitting 2.5 diamonds away from the corner pocket. Now, let's change everything. What happens if we're playing with just follow? And the ghost ball adjustment is by the way the same as we did with low, we just have to adjust a tiny bit for a cut induced throw. Very interesting in my opinion, the cue ball now again hits the same spot as with low left, so you can get the same results with high and with low left. But watch the difference in those two shots. In the first example with low left, the cue ball goes straight towards the rail because the left spin is that main force and in the just high ball, the cue ball makes that forward bend because of that high. So if you for example have to go around an obstacle, then you can use high. A lot of information, I know, but it's getting very interesting again. Remember that low left, where the left spin was the stronger force, now we're playing with high and right. Does this mean that the cue ball will somewhere travel along this line because the spin is the stronger force than the high? Think about it. And by the way, ghost ball adjustment is about the same as with low and right spin. Yes indeed, in the beginning the cue ball wants to go because of that right spin to the other direction, but the follow is this time the stronger force. Well, does that mean that with the low left I just added more spin and that's why the left spin was the stronger force? No, it's because the cue ball always has a tendency to go forward, it's more natural and the cue ball never has a natural tendency to go backwards. This is why, in the end, the follow is the stronger force here. Okay, one more thing to talk about, but again very interesting. Remember the just high ball where we hit 2.5 diamonds away from the corner pocket? I think it's pretty obvious that with high left we get a bit closer because then we have two forces that want to bring the cue ball to the right. But the big question is, 
Do we get closer to the long rail with high left or with just left spin? Think about it. With high and left we were hitting the rail at this point and with just left we're hitting the long rail even a bit closer to the corner pocket and this is because the left spin grabs immediately at the short rail and that way we bring the cue ball closer to the corner pocket. The only exception here is if you're playing on a new table with new glove where the side spin doesn't grab as good on the rails that's where you have to rely more on high or low on the cue ball. And another very interesting comparison between those two shots is with the pure left spin we hit the first long rail a bit earlier. This means the cue ball should hit the second long rail a bit closer to the side pocket. But that's not the case and this is because the left spin is still present on that second rail. It opens the angle and that's why we're scratching. With the high left there isn't that much left spin on it but more of the forward rotation and that's why with this shot we hit the long rail instead of scratching. Alright let's summarize it real quick. From low right to just left spin you have this huge area where you can get the cue ball everywhere you want. Just recreate the shot and experiment with the different spin. Of course different speed will bring you different result that's very important. And one thing there are some combinations of spin that cancel each other out. For example remember that low left shot compared to the just high shot where we hit the same spot on the rail. But keep in mind the outcome on the second or third rail is different this way. Now that you know how the cue ball reacts let's jump into a real game situation. If you're watching my videos on a regular basis you should probably know by now that I'm always telling you no matter how simple a shot is to always have a reliable pre-shot routine and very important to visualize the whole shot. This means knowing what the cue ball should do, what spin you're going to use and very important at what speed you're going to hit. What I was just doing in the intro was I didn't step or walk into the shot I just got down from the side and I also was changing my mind a couple of times changing the spin that I'm going to use and changing the speed that I'm going to use. This will definitely affect your aiming and harm your shot making ability so let's talk about how to fix this in today's video. This is just a quick preview on all the different shots you're going to learn today. I'm going to tell you exactly where you need to strike the cue ball and how you have to adjust your aiming for the side spin. And if you stick to the very end I will show you a great bonus way to get on the 8. As you can see we have a lot of different options to play the shot and regarding what option we're going to choose we of course have to adjust our aiming. So let's go for the slow roll shot first where we're just trying to hold the cue ball here and I'm going to play this shot just with right spin on the cue ball. That way I have a lot of spin induced throw. This means I can actually aim the 12 ball to the right part of the pocket or even to the rail. The right spin will throw the 12 ball to the left. That way I can aim fuller and the cue ball loses a bit more energy. If I'm now down on the shot and suddenly I'm deciding well I want to hit hard and actually come around one and two rails then of course I have to adjust my aiming because then I have a lot of deflection. This means the cue ball will actually be pushed to the left so I would completely miss the ball to here. So don't change it when you're down of course some people are adjusting by moving around but you should probably not do this and especially on difficult shots this will very likely be um, a reason to miss those shots. So. Visualize the shot while you're standing, going down, don't change anything, have already the right speed. And then just roll it in. And that way you have a really nice shot on the 8 ball without changing anything while you're down on the shot. Because we just talked about it, let's now go for the option where we're stunning the cue ball into the short rail. Bring the cue ball out with right spin and in this area for the 8 ball. I'm going to use low and right on the cue ball and I'm hitting with a medium speed. This means the spin induced throw and the deflection will cancel each other out. In this case I just can aim to the center of the pocket. Now very important visualize the shot and already know where exactly you're going to hit the cue ball otherwise you might miss this shot. And you can see we have a nice shot on the 8-ball.
Now let's talk about the shot where we're just going to stun the cue ball one rail into the short rail and back out for the 8 ball. I'm going to use low on the cue ball or a bit below center and actually a touch of left spin here. The reason for that is that if we're adding no spin to the cue ball, the cue ball will actually get a tiny bit of right spin from the cut. This means if you're going into the rail like this, the cue ball has a tiny bit of right spin and comes out like this and I don't want to end up here because then I need the perfect speed control so with left spin I'm staying a bit further away from the 8 ball and my position margin is a bit bigger. Regarding the aiming process, remember you're using a bit of left spin and you're hitting with a medium speed. Now it depends on the flexion of your cue. What will happen if you're just aiming to the center of the pocket? The cue ball will have a bit of deflection on it and actually hit the 12 ball a bit too thin into the left part of the pocket. This is why you actually have to aim a bit more to the right part of the pocket. Deflection pushes the cue ball towards here and you should hit the center of the pocket. Alright, let's show you how this shot would look in action. Very important, know what spin you're going to add, visualize the shot. And again we have a nice shot on the 8 ball, maybe a bit too soft and just a hair too much left spin, but this is a very makeable shot. I can also try to again stun the cue ball into the short rail, but then use the second rail and bring the cue ball out like this. For that I can either use a bit more left spin on the cue ball or hit just a bit higher on the cue ball. I don't want to risk getting too close to that pocket, that's why I'm going to use more left spin. And remember with a bit more left spin you have a bit more deflection, this means I'm aiming a bit more to the right here. Okay, let's show you how this would look in action. And again, we have a very, very nice shot on the 8 ball. One more option is to actually use high and right spin on the cue ball and we're trying to go into that rail, into here, then miss the 8 ball and end with the cue ball somewhere here. I'm going to use high and right as I just mentioned and hitting again at a medium speed. That way again the deflection and the spin induced throw will cancel each other out and I can just aim to the center of the pocket. Let's show you how this would look. It's a bit dangerous because you're going towards the 7 ball. So I have kind of a makeable shot here, but I wouldn't recommend this option. First of all, it's very difficult or very dangerous to end in front of the 7 ball. Maybe you can also hit that 8 ball, so I wouldn't recommend that, but that was also an option to play the shot. You know what, let's show you one more option, which is a bit more like an exhibition shot. What we're trying to do is to actually draw the cue ball past the 8 ball, use some left spin on the cue ball that opens the angle and that also speeds the cue ball up and then come a couple of rails around and end up in this position here. We have to hit a bit harder because the cue ball needs to travel a lot here. So again, we're using left spin. This means the cue ball will deflect to the left, uh, to the right, excuse me. This means I have to aim to that part here of the rail, to the right part. The cue ball deflects to the left and we will actually make the 12 ball into the pocket. But I'm trying to use the right part of the pocket just because I try to pass uh, the eight ball on that side. So I'm aiming a bit fuller here. So let's show you how this would look. Low and left, aiming a bit fuller. And again we have a very nice shot, which I wouldn't recommend to do this way because it's a lot more difficult than the previous examples. Let's summarize what you've learned in this video, of course, besides how you have to adjust your aiming with different spin and different speed on the cue ball. The main message is to always know before you're going down on the shot what you're going to do. This means what path the cue ball should take, what spin you're going to add for that and very important at what speed you're hitting the shot with because speed changes everything, especially when you're aiming with side spin. So in the future, don't go down from behind. Step behind the shot, we have uh, talked about this uh, very often about the baseline, how you have to go down. Maybe check out the video about the baseline in the top right of your screen. So be behind the shot, visualize, maybe do some pre strokes in the air, then just go down and execute the shot.
This is, by the way, also an option that you can get uh, used to get position on the 8-ball, which is a bit more like an exhibition shot compared to the one we've played before. And now let's finally break and run a rack of 9-ball and use side spin to simplify the aiming process. All right, we made um, the wing ball and also another ball. I lost the cue ball a little bit, to be honest. So this means I uh, hit a bit too hard. The good news is the one ball didn't drop into the side pocket, which is always our goal, because what happens then is the one ball comes from here and very often ends up uh, right in front or close to the corner pocket. Okay, what can we do here? First of all, let me check if that four ball passes the seven ball. And yes, it does. So this is great news for us. So I think here, all I want to do is just play a high ball, bringing the cue ball from here to that rail, and then have a straight in shot on the four ball. Bit of an angle on that side also works. Here also works, but I think I'm trying to go for that side. So this is just a high ball. I don't have to adjust for any spin here because obviously I'm not using spin. What I could do is also hit rail first. That way I can get a bit closer to the four ball but I think I don't want to risk that. So just a high ball and play it with the right speed. Because we're using no spin, I'm just aiming at the ghost ball. I actually played it a bit too soft here. That's why I'm now left with a bit more angle. But it's still doable. I think here, what I'm trying to do is in the best case, I get straight for the six ball into the corner pocket. That way I can draw a bit back. This angle works. This angle also works. All I don't want to have is too much angle. So I think this is just a center ball actually. So again, um, no adjusting for the side spin because again, I'm not using any side spin. Just going to um, adjust a bit for the cut induced throw. This means the cue ball will push the four ball just a tiny bit to the left. That's why I'm aiming a bit more into that rail. And also, um, if I'm aiming to that side, the pocket is a bit, a bit bigger because I can hit that rail. So just the center ball with the right speed. As I just said, I'm aiming a bit thinner because of that cut and use throw and because I'm actually making the pocket bigger if I'm aiming into the long rail. Imagine you're aiming into the long rail, you're accidentally hitting it too thick, the object ball will still drop. And even if you're shooting the object ball into the long rail, the object ball will also drop. The funny thing about this is I was actually accidentally hitting too thick, but I got away with it just because of the reason that I just described. And what do we have? Well, that's actually okay. A bit too much angle, but actually um, this is basically a very, very natural shot. So now it's very important to know what happens with the cue ball if you just roll it in and uh, some people might be afraid of the side pocket but when I'm going down you should definitely see that the cue ball is not going um, into the side pocket but it will hit you know, I think right around here so again I'm going to use a touch of left spin this will bring the cue ball out and then in the best case we end close to straight on the seven ball or also a bit of an angle on that side works to bring the cue ball into here and then towards the eight ball on that type of shot, I'm going to use um, a touch of left spin because, first of all, we just talked about it here. I have a bit of cut induced throw. This means the six ball would go a bit towards here if I'm using the ghost ball. With that left spin, I am throwing the six ball a bit to the right because of that spin induced throw. And that way, I can just aim to my usual ghost ball spot. That's why I like to use a bit of outside spin on those kind of shots. And it also helps our position here. So high, left spin. Just a regular ghost ball spot. If you're not feeling comfortable, stand up. Isn't this an amazing principle to use? Yes, it is, but be careful. You can't use this principle on every single cut shot you're facing because there are a couple of factors we need to talk about first. 
Let's talk about the cutting angle. Coming from my ICA training system, I can see that this is a 30 degree cut and you should know at that angle the cut induced throw is peaking. This means here I have to use the most amount of left spin to compensate for the cut induced throw. If I'm having less angle on the cue ball, like this, then I also need to use less spin and if I'm having more angle, I also need to use less spin, as I mentioned, because the cut and use throw will also be less. And of course, we need to talk about speed. I'm going to hit the same shot as before now with the same amount of spin, the same aiming point on the six ball. The only difference will be I'm hitting really hard this time. What do you think? Where will the six ball go? Will it go into the heart of the pocket? Will it go to the long rail or will it go to the short rail? Take a couple of seconds, think about it, maybe even leave a comment down below. Before I'm actually going to play the shot, let's talk about the theory real quick. Well, what happens with cut and use throw if I'm hitting really hard? The good news is cut and use throw will be less, so the six ball won't be thrown to what's here, but actually goes a bit more into the pocket. What happens with spin and use throw? Spin and use throw is also less, but this is no problem since we don't have to adjust for more cut and use throw. It's no problem that we have less spin and use throw as well. But the big question now is what happens with the deflection? You always have deflection and more deflection if you're hitting really hard. The problem is the deflection will actually push the cue ball to the right. This means the cue ball won't arrive here, but a bit more here and the six ball should go probably into that long rail because I'm hitting really hard. Okay, long story short, let's show you the actual shot. So left spin and a really hard hit. Oh, actually made a foul here. And you can see we accidentally made the six ball, but I definitely hit that long rail. So remember, this only works if you're slow rolling the cue ball. And let's finally talk about distance and cue elevation. First of all, if you're very close, then it's very difficult. This is a really nice distance. The further away you're getting, the more difficult it gets, but not significantly. If the cue ball is here, I would still be very comfortable playing this shot with spin. The only problem is if you're frozen to the rail, for example, because then you have to elevate a bit. And what happens if you're elevating your cue? Yes, the cue ball will make a curve. So I would never play this shot if I'm having to elevate, for example, also over a ball. This becomes just so, so difficult because here I'm elevating, I'm using left spin. The cue ball will make a curve to the left because I'm using left spin. So let's play this shot real quick and show you what happens. Um, basically trying to aim straight or shoot the six ball straight into this rail. This is why I'm just aiming straight, but keep in mind I'm using left spin. So the cue ball will come to the left and the six ball won't hit here, but somewhere on the right. Let's show you how this will look. A bit of left spin. As mentioned, I'm aiming straight on the six ball. And that way I'm able to make that six ball, even though I was aiming it towards here. So you can see the curve is really, really difficult. So if you elevate it, don't use any spin on the cue ball. Okay, now we're going to continue with the break and run. Still um, a couple of things to learn. Enjoy. And we ended almost straight. So now I have two options. I could either play a stop shot. If I'm just rolling it in, the cue ball goes a bit to the uh, long rail. I don't want to be frozen and I don't want to be straight on the eight ball. So I could either just play a stop shot, take a shot from here, which would be fine. What I could also do is follow the ball, get a bit closer to the eight, go into the long rail into the short rail and then have a shot on the eight ball. I think that's what I'm going to do is because I'm just want to get a bit closer to that eight ball. So just a high ball, no spin on the cue ball. And we have a nice shot on the eight ball. I'm not straight. So now I have two options or a couple of options. I could just roll it in, bring the cue ball towards here and have a shot into the side pocket. But to be honest, I don't like to play the nine ball into the side pocket from its typical spot. That's why I'm trying to bring the cue ball into that area and play the nine ball into here. Just a bit uh, easier, even if I'm not uh, having the perfectly straight angle compared to the side pocket. So here I could either stun out or go into that rail and then here the problem is if I'm going into that rail I'm crossing the line a bit because the cue ball comes out like this. If I'm going for the stun shot you can see the 
tubal goes along here and I have um, a nice shot on a nine ball for a longer time. So my position window is a bit bigger. That's why I'm just going to stun it. No spin again. As you can see, I'm adding a bit of unwanted left spin on the cue ball and I'm just hitting a tad too low, as you can see from the cue ball's reaction. Of course, I don't want to end up that close to the nine ball. If the cue ball travels a bit further away from the nine ball, my position window is a bit bigger. Um, the thing is, the closer you are um, to the nine ball, let's imagine the cue ball travels along here, then my position window for the perfect position is pretty small compared to the cue ball travels here, then my position window is a bit bigger. So this actually wasn't a good shot. I also hit a bit too soft, but we still have a very makeable nine ball. Here it's the same principle again, using a touch of outside spin on those kind of shots, um, because then I'm again adjusting for the cut and use throw. And then all I have to do is just aim to the regular ghost ball spot. That's why you will see a lot of people um, using outside spin, even though it's not necessary on those kind of shots. Okay, so think high, some right spin, and then we should be able to make that nine ball. Congratulations, you reached the end of this video, but if you still don't have enough and if you want to learn more about how to aim with side spin, on how to control the cue ball with spin, on position play, on banking, kicking, safety game, just to become a better player, then watch more of my videos and of course subscribe to this channel.